How's it going, everybody? It's the Redhead Gamer, and welcome to the Forest Hills Podcast. Joining me here right now, I have a bunch of people. I have Levi, I have Brandon, I have The Cruel, and we're just gonna get right into it here. So, I know a lot of you are hyped about Forest Hills, so if you guys want more Forest Hills content, don't forget to drop a follow for all the great content creators here, such as The Cruel, Brandon, Levi, and I would also appreciate if you dropped one for myself as well. But anyway, without any further ado, let's send it on over to the rest of them here. So, coming in hot real quick. Buddy, it's me, The Cruel. How's it going, guys? Hey, hey you. Buddy. One second, just flipping it over. Bada bing. Oh, wait, wrong one. Wrong one. Wrong one. Okay, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. Okay, now it's all screwed up. <laughs> Ooh, hopefully you're not showing anybody no folders. Why did we change positions? Oh, well, it's fine. A forest hills. Yeah, I had to make a last second change there because, you know, I'm a boosted man. That's just how I live my life. It's all good. Respectable see, stuff. See, for next time, we just got to ask the devs, can you make us, like, a custom? <laughs> okay. Custom. Yeah, man, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it looks like everybody else stayed in their positions for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Discord be discordant sometimes. But anyway, let, let's get on to the real meat of the subject, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people here are already kind of like, you know, you know, what's the big news here? So obviously, for those of you who don't know, I, I'm sure most of you probably know by now, though, if we're in the Forest Hills category. But last year was recently bought by a company called Undaunted Games, and they basically have renamed the game. And they're basically remaking everything and kind of just putting it in a whole new package here. So, you know, Forest Hills the last year is how last year is going to be from now on. And it seems like from the teasers we've seen, uh, basically all of your old favorites are going to be making a comeback. Uh, that includes, you know, Nick, Chad, Sam, Amber, the list goes on. And also the Fiends will be coming back as well. But they're also going to be adding new fiends, such as the Warlock, which we saw some teaser footage for recently. And they also had an event at PAX here, and some of us were able to go. I personally was not, but for those of you who were able to go, what were your thoughts? Well, that would just be me. Uh, <laughs> well, um, from what I saw, uh, I went there on Friday, um, and... Pretty much all day, they had a line that was directly in front of the booth, and it would curve around to the back of the booth. Um, it was pretty much always full, with enough people for two separate games. Um, they had enough PCs set up to where there were two separate games going at any time. Um, the artwork that they had set up was great. Um, a nice big display that you could see from basically almost anywhere in the arena. Um, and, you know, everyone was very welcoming. A couple of the devs were there, just sitting there, talking to people who were playing the game, giving them more info while they played, helping them out to understand the mechanics. Um, and it just seemed, you know, very welcoming from seeing the devs there and towards the community. Um, there was plenty of people walking by who were like, oh, what's this? Oh... I, I don't know what this is. Let me, you know, talk to somebody about it. And there would always be somebody to, like, answer questions and be like, hey, why don't you come in, play around, see how you like it. Um, seeing 12, 12 monitors going with um, the new cemetery map was pretty cool. You could see the different locations in the map all at once um, from just being... Uh, like an above-ground cemetery area to an underground, almost um, France catacombs vibe to it, where there's like skulls all over the walls. It was it was pretty cool to see. Um, on the monitors, you could really tell that the lighting and the Unreal Engine 5 upgrades that they've done is just really nice to see. Yeah, and it sounds like that's been something a lot of people have been kind of on the fence about. Like, I saw when some people saw the teaser at first, which kind of showed off the cemetery map. Some people were kind of like, oh no, I don't like the look of this. But other people were like, wow, this is great. You know, I love the new graphics update. So I guess, you know, just kind of going around the table here, what are your guys' thoughts on, like, the update and the Unreal 5 engine? 
Yeah. Right, um, <laughs> yeah, go right ahead, Brandon. All right, so I have a few criticism of the new map, but for me, I can tell it's early access and it's not ready yet. But what I noticed real, f like real fast is that it felt almost sort of flat. There wasn't very much ambient occlusion around the edges of like the graves and the tombs. It was very flat. Like it wasn't very dark. And there also just weren't very many reflections. But I did see a blurry live stream. So I have no idea what it looks like. I'll be honest. But other yeah. than that, I do think the map reworks of the older maps look really good that they've shown in the Discord. Everything else looks awesome. The new map, I think, just needs a bit more like effects and post processing. Yeah. That's what I've got for it. Yeah, I, I think that does actually sum up pretty well. Uh, I wasn't precisely sure since this is kind of trailing off of a little bit of like what um, last year, Chapter Two, uh, the, the resurrection was supposed to effectively be. Right, it was supposed to be a little bit more, um, you know, fire oriented. So I kind of expected it to be brighter. You know, kind of have a little bit more of a orangish hue where things would usually be um and i mean you know that that does just make sense but um yeah um uh, the, the shadows to me seemed a little awkward and it just seemed uh, a little more like the sort of post nightmare-esque style and there's nothing wrong with that when we talk about like sawmill or we talk about like mine for instance you know um a uh, uh, good use of assets, but at the same time, there's just that something that feels a little off, you know? And, um, I mean, <laughs> like you said, it was on some, you know, blurry screens that's, uh, on, on a stream, and that, that's basically what I was able to see, too. So, uh, I think it just comes down to what we'll just have to work with when we get it. I, I definitely think it's something they can polish real fast. Honestly. It's not yeah. that big of a deal to me. So it sounds like you guys feel like there needs to be a little bit more polish in some areas to kind of give it that dark ambient feel that you would want in like a horror series. Or... Absolutely. I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of trailing off of what Cruel just said there too, you know, kind of them using this as like a continuation kind of like chapter two resurrection was supposed to be. One thing I did notice in the stream actually was that you could find a the father bust for like a part of escaping the catacombs which i thought was really interesting because originally i thought when they introduced the warlock that the warlock was going to be like the new father you know basically like mm -hmm. their version of what the father was supposed to be but seeing yeah. that they're actually keeping both characters is kind of interesting to me and i'm kind of curious now as to how like they're going to build that into the lore do you guys have any thoughts on that um so i actually have news about that that when we get to the interview section uh we'll actually answer that question oh okay <laughs> so you have the answers already huh i have a lot of answers <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks, boy. thanks to a nice 20 minute interview with trade in the middle of a very noisy arena yeah that, that's kind of interesting honestly um because there was also a bellman bust as well and that's like, he was supposed to be, like, the principal of the school previously, and I guess he's been roped into it somehow, so. Um, oh, crazy, yeah. Um, it, I, I definitely would like to know more about that, for sure. I, I think Bellman's gonna have a huge part. They even made concept art for him, and I mean, like, have you seen his library, dude? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, well. I mean, I, I definitely yeah. think, like, where does he have all this money and, like, resources to do this? There's definitely something else going on here that we don't know about yet. Well, I mean, even from the old games, there's always been something about, uh, you know, Bellman that's been going on. There, We've just never really gotten a lot of the lore back yet. Because um, there's always been, like, something going on with Bellman where he's always showing up in places and just, like, this menacing um, sort of presence that's always there in the nightmare. Um but we never really know why he's like this omnipresent figure that's there. Um, so that's something that I didn't get an answer to, but I'm hoping that in the new game, maybe we'll get like lower tidbits um, and they'll be able to more explain like how the nightmare works or um, if there's like somebody or something that's like creating this, um, which would, I guess, give us an answer as to why Bellman shows up on all of the maps. <laughs> 
And kind of kind of going off of that too like storytelling in games is always like a big topic as well and you know like as you were saying there levi you kind of hope that they give you some lore tidbits but i guess overall just asking everybody here at the table and also in the chat how would you like to see the story being told in the game because you know some games have very linear stories where it's kind of like oh you know this is this and this is what it does you know and they kind of like slowly introduce these things to you through like dialogue or something and then you have like i guess after dark and nightmare kind of did this in a way in my opinion and i kind of call it i don't exactly know like the storytelling way of saying it but i kind of call it the dark souls method where it's like, you know, you eventually find some items and maybe there's like a little bit of tidbit of lore around it or like voice lines about things. And then you kind of have to theory craft or like put these ideas together in order to like get the full story. So I guess like when it came to a game like this, how would you like to see the story or lore being explored or told? I, I know for me, I think a cool way to do it would be um, similar to kind of like how Friday the 13th did it, where it's like a collectible like recording, or since this is, um, I know in the After Dark version, it was about like a card game kind of thing. So it'd be cool to like find like cards and then like you could flip the card over and there was like a little bit of tidbit of like what the card is and like it kind of explains a little bit without like giving you too much details or, um, some sort of like collectible item like a relic or, um, just something that could kind of shape your idea without giving you like a direct answer to your question, I guess would be kind of cool. I, I definitely hope they keep going the almost left for dead narrative where all the maps are connected, even though it makes no sense to go from a high school to the sawmill. And I know it's out of order, but I, I think them being connected kind of lets you piece together a story of your own. Yeah. Um, but when it, when it's come down to any form of multiplayer storytelling, since we're kind of going more along the online PvP route for this, it's always been nice when it's been things that have been accordance with the maps, like you said, Brandon. Um, it's not something you obviously want it to be where oh we're trying to force feed the story down your throat, whether you like it or not. We're not we're, we're trying to craft everything around it. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like the subtle touches that usually can like um, like you said, uh, Left 4 Dead style, kind of tell you what has happened if it's already happened, if it's happening, or you know what like the stipulation is, or you know what we can expect going forward. I suppose because you also have to kind of uh, speculate uh, what could happen next. You know, I mean, it's very early, obviously, but. It's just some things to think about. Kind of going over uh, a comment here in the chat by Doge. Uh, considering they're going for a comic book approach, the story is probably going to be more linear and straight up told. So, you know, that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. And that's also kind of like another thing I wanted to touch on as well is like, how do you guys feel about some of the changes you saw during the uh, live stream? Or like if you, I sense for Levi, you got to play it at PAX. So like, I kind of noticed that the gameplay loop, although like the objectives are, some of the objectives are kind of new, like finding the bus, for example. Um, it seems like it's kind of the same game. Like, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, um, I... I didn't really have too many problems with last year in the first place. I thought it was good in how, you know, everything was pretty much set up. Um, the whole objective of the killer was effectively to keep the classmates off of the objective as long as possible. Um, and it seems like, you know, they've kind of retained that whole sort of thing in the game. Now, one thing they did bring up that uh, kind of intrigued me a little bit is they want to do something with lockpicking. Um... Obviously something that wasn't able to have been showcased, but um, that's going to add kind of a, a a crazy sort of aspect. I'm not sure what's going to transpire during that, because maybe these are sorts of, you know, hold out and survive and, you know, wait for the person who is lockpicking to try and get through the gate to get to the objective. Um, kind of slows the game down a little bit so that it's not just, oh, uh, everybody try your hardest. We got to get there as fast as we got to do this, blah, 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 blah. Um, but uh, overall, I, I, I kind of I respect the gameplay, and um, I 
do like some of the new objectives that they have set up. It's a uh, pretty pretty well done. You make a good point. I do think that having more stuff to do and like having room to explore and actually do stuff would do a lot for the game because right now the game's kind of cheese or be cheesed. And I feel like if they allowed you to have more unique play styles and stuff to do, it'd make the game a lot more fun and less, I don't know, samey, I guess. Yeah. You know? So since we are on the topic of lockpicking, I do have some information on that. Um, So a direct quote. uh, Lockpicking is a new mechanic we are adding that will show up on various maps. And it's just going to help find new rooms and new routes. Uh, it's a small mini game that you do at a door that hopefully, if you complete, you can get in to get rewards. Uh, so tons of scrap, extra weapons just lying on the ground, that kind of thing. Uh, so from what's being said, um, it looks like, you know, they're basically like mini treasure rooms where you can get scrap to build items or there'll be pre-done weapons on the ground waiting for you uh, to help you fight back. Uh, or it might just open up a secondary way to get to an objective instead of uh, going in a way that's being defended. That sounds really nice, actually, because to me, that kind of sounds like the devs have been kind of looking at the balance of the game and trying to figure out ways of like making it more balanced for both sides. Because I, I remember one issue that a lot of people would complain about was quote unquote scrap rushing where basically like the classmates would essentially just run around and grab all the scrap when they could and just build items and basically just beat up on the fiend. And it sounds like that's kind of like a mechanic that's been introduced in a way in order to slow that down. Like, you know, instead of just, oh, fiend's dead, let's run around, separate and grab everything we can. It sounds yeah. like you actually need to do a little bit of a mini game in order to get into a room that might have a ton of scrap you can get so you can build those items to basically beat up on the fiends. Um, yeah. And another thing, too, is like I kind of like what they're doing, too, with the objectives because... Um, beforehand, you know, last year had some really simple objectives, like, you know, grab the fuel canister, walk it from point A to point B, and then you have to, like, hold down one button just to pour it in for a few seconds, or, you know, the wheel was basically the same idea, get there and basically just hold it enough and get it to 100%. Um, it sounds like by adding more of these mini games, kind of like what a few other games have done, it'll make it like a little bit more difficult and intense on the classmate side, but also make it so that, you know, the fiend has to like think a little bit more about just protecting the main objective, which will be kind of interesting. Um, and last thing I want to add here too, and then I want all of your thoughts, of course, is like during the uh, live stream as well, they talked about how at the end of the cemetery, it's not just like one big run for the exit anymore like it was in previous installments. It sounds like now everybody escapes like individually. You have to get to your own door and escape through that way. So it sounds like now at the end, it's basically an every man for themselves sort of run to the exit on the classmate side. And I guess what's your thoughts on that? Okay, it's God. interesting to me because I I fail to understand how the fiend is going to kill people. Like, if if everyone's split up, that's what I'm trying to figure out how it's going to play out. I do like the idea, though. I really want to see what, what it looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, good. that's kind of a tough call, right? Um, on one hand, I really like that they are absolutely trying to do something new. As simple as it was to just, you know, okay, everybody, uh, we've done the last objective. Now just run to the escape gate and let's get out of here. Um, I, I, yeah, I actually would kind of like to see something more like that, right? Where, um, you know, you have to do one other thing, or maybe you do have to abandon some friends, or maybe you have to go in pairs to do something, or maybe um, I mean, there's just a plethora of different things you can do, right? But overall, I would say that... Um, yeah, that that's that's a great idea. That that is. I uh, I can't wait to see more of that. Actually, like the mine was different. I mean, yeah, it's not really that much to it. But you just go up instead of like every other exit has parkour or some sort of you know unique gimmick. The mine you kind of just go up. I think if they keep adding gimmicks to each exit, 
it'll be like every map will feel like its own map. You know what I mean? Makes it unique, yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see. And I feel like they've kind of gotten some inspiration too from like other asymmetricals in the market because the idea of like escaping through your own individual door kind of reminds me of Home Sweet Home Survive a little bit because that's kind of oh, like yeah. how the end game in yeah. that game was. You had to like find the door, open it, and then run through if you were going the escape route. And uh, the lock picking is kind of like similar to Texas Chainsaw Massacre and you know a number of other titles. So it'll be really interesting to see how last year evolves and how the meta changes over time as like these other mini objectives or like you know different objectives are added over time. Um, yeah, and I'd be really curious as to like what that does to the fiend side as well because you know originally the fiend basically just puppy dog guarded the main objective right like oh if it's the fuel canister just stay on the fuel canister or you know if it's a wheel stay on the wheel but now it sounds like there's going to be a whole bunch of things and you're going to have to like calculate like do i want them getting into that room full of scrap right now because they could probably make a molotov and i'm playing spider and that's not a good time or you know what the case may be yeah Absolutely. I do think it's going to make the meta game a lot more fun. You know, unless of the just AFK on objective until you win, you know. Yeah. And um for sure that that is something I kind of do worry about a little bit. Um and I absolutely do always respect these types of games or respect anything that is effectively just trying you try to shake up the match a little bit, right? Where, uh, maybe there is a random feature, right? Where the objective will be in a different place, or maybe it'll be uh, in a set location, but uh, the, the way that people gain scrap and have to do other things, like these side mini games, would you know detract from doing that, or some other way, like if you open the door to get to another area, um, it would just kind of either slow the gameplay or it would just mix it up. As much as, as, much as we all love doing the same thing over and over and over again, it's, it's definitely nice to have a chance and i guess like one thing i want to ask levi right now actually um is spam traps going to be making a return do you know i i did not ask about that hey no worries i just didn't um, see it. i do have plenty of information on the gameplay changes they've made um so if you want to get into that i can definitely answer questions about that yeah, let's um, fire luckily, up this. Luckily, Trade was uh, more than willing to give as many answers as he could. Right. That's good. Let's go ahead and fire um, up that sweet interview then, homie. All right, so we started off. Officially, it's being labeled as a sequel to last year. Is that going to bring any sort of gameplay changes? And he said, I think it's going to bring some new... Well, a lot of it is still similar to what we had in last year. But we are bringing new gameplay changes in the character. For example, fiends are going to have new mechanics added to what they have. Good examples, the giant, he's going to have two different basic attacks. One is going to be a swinging haymaker to knock you back. The other is going to be a rage mechanic so that he can kind of go into a berserker rage where he takes more damage, but he deals and dishes out more damage as well. Uh, Slasher is going to have an axe throw, so that all of the same kit that he already had, plus an axe throw that he can use to teleport and give himself uh, mobility options. Uh, so that kind of changes are going to happen. The classes, so the medic is going... Uh, uh, the classes, so the medic is getting the new dart gun as a replacement for the pouch, because we just felt that this would be better gameplay dynamic play flow for the medic. Uh, the assault is going to have a shield that's going to be able to block to kind of mitigate damage and not just be about swinging the pipe, but also a tanking kind of role. Uh, so those kinds of changes are coming to play. The old maps are also going to be brought in. All right, so a lot of a lot of new stuff, actually. Kind of one interesting thing is it sounds like all the fiends are going to have, like, a little bit of changes to him because it sounds like the slasher is losing his dash ability and he's gaining like an axe throw ability and then he can like teleport to the axe wherever it lands. 
Yeah, I, honestly, from from how he kind of talked about it, it it honestly sounds like one of those uh, like you throw the axe, it'll hit something, and then you can teleport over to that area. Um, or I'm I'm guessing if it hits something, you won't be able to teleport it to it, or it'll just come back to you, kind of thing. Because if you know you hit somebody, now you're teleporting directly on top of them and can hit them again. So. Um, or that might be a thing that you're able to do if, you know, you're really good at your aim. So, right. um, so far with the giant changes, he didn't mention anything with the strangler though, which is the one character I would have loved to have gotten more info on. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. the strangler was always that fun one just to kind of sneak up behind somebody and just drag them away. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. I... See you later. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know if they would really make much changes to him because he always seemed like the one that people chose first anyway um compared to everyone else um it's a pretty strong pick yeah <laughs> just so much utility to get others away from the group and then you can get away pretty easily yeah did that's... they say about like the spider um no he did not mention the spider oh no um, i'm worried besides uh some information on a possible cosmetic Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I will not complain about spider cosmetics. <laughs> That's one thing, <laughs> like, you know, I do feel like a lot of people would be interested in how they're going to rework the Strangler, because for as long as I can remember, like, people have been freaking out about Strangler. Like, either yeah. he's, he's way too strong, he's way too weak, or, like, you know, I guess for a lot of the newbies, quote-unquote, like, they felt like he was the most... <laughs> harassing fiend out there because anybody who knew how to play him could essentially just like you know KO the whole team at once <laughs> yeah kill the whole team within 20 seconds and call it all good bro like it wasn't even yep. a big deal like god the amount of I mean, times if you if, if you show up in just the right spot in the beginning of a map you can especially in like the mines or the sawmill you can just pull somebody off a ledge and boom that's it pull them into a saw yeah. blade, boom that's it just wipe out a whole team in the first couple of minutes <laughs> um, I don't think any of the other fiends had that sort of potential for like just an immediately uh, an immediate end to a match. Um, oh. I think the only one that might be able to do that could possibly be the giant, and that's only because he rushes into them. If they're all huddled together, he could potentially knock everyone down. But well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say too, because he could pick people up before, and I mean, like you said, if there was a saw blade or. Or like a cliff, you just throw somebody off the cliff, you know, and that's pretty much free kill as well. Ah, oh, bell tower with the giant was always so. Much. Oh yeah, <laughs> good times. Just eat somebody all the way back to the school. Oh, yep. Good times. So Doge brought up in the chat here: Spider will have eight clutches. Strangler victims will have grapple escape mechanics. Those were mentioned on the first part of the dev stream. I must have missed that part. And then Fisheye yeah. Fool also says, "Oh my God, it's my favorite YouTube, The Cruel." Oh my God, <laughs> what a what a vibe, honestly. But but I guess kind of going back to the uh, the whole mechanic changes. How do you guys feel about the Strangler victims having like an escape mechanic? Like, well, it sounds like we're getting quick time events, and honestly, that sounds kind of fun. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah, that would be cool, actually. Unless it's just spamming A and D. We'll see how it goes. Got a button mash like it's old school RE4, like you're running <laughs> from a boulder. Just gotta go, gotta go. Yeah, you know that kind of that kind of reminds me of um, the early days of Strangler when you know you just get pulled away and you'd have to have like one of your come and like press a button to like free you or something like that. So maybe they'll just I don't know after a certain amount of time or maybe that's gonna be another mission, right where you know you have to do something and specific order maybe and you get out but yeah, I know the, taking damage the old version of basically him just letting go um so I, I think it would be a cool change to actually have people be able to like struggle off of him yeah um, instead of what they did before where it was just oh he dealt a certain amount of damage so now he has to let go or yeah. he's holding on to you and a certain amount of time has passed so now he has to let go where it's exactly. actually like input between the players sounds like a much funner option to me <laughs> and i think that would honestly like kind of add that like sort of difficulty curve as well you know you have to m probably get a chain or a strangle at like the opportunity so that you're not just constantly hitting people you know because um after you hit your chain and you got your damage in then 
you just resorted to smacking people in the face. <laughs> you know? Uh, Bubsky also brings up, each fiend will also have their own traps. Um, did oh, you hear anything for... about that, Levi? Uh, I did not hear anything about different traps. No, that's kind of cool. Kind of curious. But I'm guessing that's point. because he mentioned it during the stream, so it's one of those things where they, uh, he didn't think about it. Yeah, so this is another thing real quick, because a lot of people are bringing it up in the chat right now. Uh, trauma content is a bad move. Prove me wrong. I'm unfamiliar with trauma, but I do have concerns about resources being poured in the licenses early on when the core game needs a lot of work to better appeal to non-dedicated players. So, you know, for those of you, I'm sure everybody here knows, but for those of you who don't know, um, it appears that Forest Hills has actually made a license deal with Troma, and they have a bunch of uh, licenses such as Toxic Avenger, Cannibal the Musical, and a number of others. So, like, you know, what are your guys' opinion on them bringing in licensed content into the game? Because one thing I found that was really interesting was that this license deal is actually with Troma themselves. So it's not just like they only have the Toxic Avenger. They're going to be able to bring in, like, the entire catalog that Troma owns into the game eventually. So what's your guys' thoughts and feelings on it? Because I feel like Slasher's radioactive waste skin, the one where he's like lime green, looks a lot like the Toxic Avenger. Just turn yeah. the axe into a mop and you're good to go, basically. <laughs> so I'm going to yeah. let everyone else go first because I actually do have some information about this. So. Oh, there it uh, is. Da -da. All right, well, uh, licenses is always good. I did not expect us to get a license, especially this early. I didn't even think we were going to get licenses for a long time because it's just we don't see licenses in most ASIMs. Unless they're like a direct license product, usually we just haven't. So this is actually going to be the first ASIM that isn't Dead by Daylight that's putting other licenses into their game, uh, which is pretty cool to think about. That's neat. Pretty crazy. Oh, man. Um, actually, having been someone who kind of grew up a little bit with trauma, um, and, and watching things like Cannibal the Musical, which is absolutely amazing, by the way, if you guys, <laughs> I mean, I definitely suggest it, uh, and things like the Toxic Avenger, which is just so ridiculous. Um, uh, it, it's sort of this sort of um, a classic comedy horror style, um, and. I suppose I could see like maybe one or two kind of fitting in, but uh, uh, I mean, it could be funny. I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, you got to explain more than that, brother, because you you seem to like <laughs> you said that, and then you kind of got this look on your face of like, <laughs> like it, it looks yeah. like concern, but at the same time, it looks kind of like you know you're vibing. So. I yeah, it is kind of a minor bit of concern. I still do have sort of a idea of like what last year like was back in the day, right? Where we're leaning more aspect, and um, you know, you saw things like uh, a, a employee modding in like any model of characters, or you know, um, having the idea of uh, you know, a character, like Freddy Krueger, maybe even just some you know, more. Now, I guess classic 80s horror trope or something like that that's, uh, you know, I, maybe not as comical as some of the trauma cast. And um, I, think, uh, I think with uh, trauma, it's uh, a, a lot of it is, it, it is comedy horror, right? So a lot of the, uh, the, the characters are, you know, made off of um, like fun ideas. Uh, I'm trying to remember the one, but there's one where uh, they build a chicken restaurant on a Native American burial ground. Uh, that's and... Poultrygeist. Yes, and that one is so crazy that uh, I don't know how they would do that in the game, you know? I mean, I am glad oh. you mentioned that. I mean, Levi, you, 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 do you have anything for me on that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. Okay. So... One of the questions I asked was, now you did mention that we're getting Toxic Avenger. Are mm -hmm. we getting any survivors with that? Um, and 
Trade said, it might be Lloyd Kaufman himself. We talked to Lloyd. He's got such a colorful personality as one of the leaders of Troma. And I think it'd be hilarious to see oh. him come out in a white suit with a bow tie. Uh, he's like this colorful guy. Uh, we might do Melvin uh, and kind of split off, off Melvin, who's the human form of the Toxic Avenger, uh, might become one of the flavors of Survivor. Uh, the main focus is really going to be a new killer and a new class with new maps. So Toxic Avenger himself, we're hoping to design uh, to where it's a class and whoever takes on the role of the Toxic Avenger transforms into him. Uh, the new killer would be the Poultrygeist, based off <gasps> one of Troma's films, Poultrygeist. Uh, it's an original killer that we are designing that is a homage to that and is essentially a zombie chicken. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for context, I have no idea, like, anything about Troma, so this just sounds like gibberish to me. Like, have, what are you, you talking you, about? So, have you ever oh seen the movie... Thanks killing about a zombie. Um, <laughs> so there so <laughs> it sounds really goofy though. So Trauma basically makes these low budget horror comedies um, mm -hmm. that are very out there. Like they've got movies like uh uh Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> Toxic Avenger, Nukem High, um Surf Nazis Must Die. Um <laughs> They've got a lot of like really weird out there stuff. There's one that's mm -hmm. uh if I'm I remember, I think they also made Frankenhooker. Um, <laughs> uh, either they made it or Lloyd is actually in that movie. I know he's in that movie. I just don't know if they made it. Um, but imagine stuff like that. Yeah, I, I understand. Being able to bring that in is just so different from every other horror game that's out it, there. Yeah. Which is like such an appreciated, like, idea to where it's like we're a horror game but we also want to encompass all of horror not just the scary stuff sometimes we want to have like a joke between us and the community you know and just the idea of lloyd kaufman himself being a survivor and you just walk around in like the poultry geist chicken uniform for like the restaurant is just I would rock that every single match if I had a chance. I get that as a skin for Nick. I am done. Right there, I'll yeah. pay for it. So, so just going through the chat real quick here. Um, Lurking Raptor Trauma is known for very low effort movies with lots of crude humor. Uh, Doge isn't poultry guys to come into the game. Yeah, uh, Red, it's setting in already. I can tell. A new fiend class and map for that might be a little too much, especially an entire class where any classmate can turn into the Toxic Crusader and Hulk out. I remember hearing that on the first part of the dev stream as well. Just doesn't seem like last year at all to me. Yeah, this definitely feels like a super desperation move already. I, uh, I guess in my personal opinion, like, I kind of like this move because I feel like it'll add a little bit more atmosphere to the game. Like, obviously, I know, like, some people, you know, wanted, like, a slasher horror, like, serious, you know, like, this is terrible stuff going on sort of, like, game. But I feel like the areas where last year kind of shines previously in gameplay was... A, like the moves you could do. Like Fiend could do a lot of cool stuff. Like Strangler, for example. You pull somebody, you throw them through a trap door which has a trap at the bottom. You hit them twice as they're falling. They fall into the trap. You can basically beat the crap on a, out of them and then kill them, right? Um, but I also feel like some of the dumb and funny things people liked about the game were kind of those things like, for example, you could, you know... Uh, throw a pipe bomb at somebody and like kill your teammates or like you know yeah. people were literally making montages of that for god's yeah, sakes yeah yeah and like <laughs> i mean we we all know that the one person who was like the pipe bomb king yeah exactly and spent the whole match pipe bombing constantly like every time you saw him he had a pipe bomb because he would just run the map for scrap constantly yeah. and it was hilarious pro not tip the medic role is not supposed to heal people that's not what it's for i'm sorry <laughs> no, that is true that is true and not just um, that like real quick i guess like also you know there were like a lot of dumb references like nick you know would constantly scream like references to movies and things like that and like yeah you know, there were some yeah. other things like that um 
I guess, like, overall, I feel like, you know, having these sorts of things added to the game, even though they might be crude humor, quote-unquote, might be kind of nice, because that'll actually give it, like, some atmosphere. Because I feel like original last year, you know, although it was fun and it could be competitive in some ways, like, didn't really have anything where it was like, oh my god, like, what the hell's happening, you know? I mean, sure, some people scream when, like, mm -hmm. the giant falls down and grabs them, or you know, Slasher comes around the corner or Strangler pulls him in, but could you imagine, like, somebody who, like, plays Forest Hills for the first time and, like, you know, say they're playing Strangler and, like, they go to grab some guy and the second he, like, breaks free, he just hulks out on them, you know? Like, imagine that reaction. Somebody's <laughs> gonna be like, what the fuck is going on right now? Why did this man just turn green? And, like, why is he beating the crap out of me? Like, what? I don't get it, you know? Just in a skirt. Yeah, well, I know. From, that's that's from, funny. Oh, I kind of want that now. That's funny. I do know from the way he said it, it seems like the Toxic Avenger character itself is going to be a class like Medic. Um, so it seems like there's going to be a limited amount of people who can actually play that because last last time they did any sort of updates, they made it like limited to how many people can choose a class, so that you know you didn't have an entire team of medics. Um, so I'm guessing they're probably going to, when it comes to these, like, specialty classes or, um, sort of license classes, they might do, like, a one-off character who can do it. Like, only one person can choose that role so that it's not, like, overused. Um, or there has to be, like, certain conditions to maybe using that role, which I think would be fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm totally down for, like, you're about to get strangled, you break free, and you just stupor hulk out as like sam and you still have like the head brace on and everything <laughs> you're just like beating him to death oh uh, it's gonna it's it's gonna be great i'm i'm excited yeah um one thing i do want to note um for this sort of thing is uh it, it, this is this is gonna be a class theoretically it's probably just gonna be one person filling that role i'm sure because it would only make sense for there to be one toxic avenger um but this is also one of those things where I kind of think, uh, like, is this going to be something that's perpetually always available? Is this available on specific maps, like this kind of some sense? Um, or is, you know, is this something that's it's just going to be all over the place? Or I, I don't know, maybe, I guess what I'm really asking is, is this going to be like a situational? Is this just going to be something... That you can just do right off the bat, or uh, it's just tough to say. No. Yeah, um, honestly, I think when it comes to something like this, um, if it's going to be its own class, um, there should obviously, like all the other classes, there's different things that you can do. Um, but when it comes to Toxic Avenger, maybe it's like a very high price scrap item, like how the um, like the flamethrower is like the highest priced scrap item for a certain class um with toxic avenger maybe there's like a thing of you know like toxic waste that you can like douse yourself in and it gives you like it transforms you for a certain amount of time and you can just you know like beat down people with it um or maybe there's drawbacks to using the toxic avenger ability to where uh, maybe because you're covered in toxic waste now you start taking uh, way more damage while you're transformed to where, like, a couple of hits will knock you down. Um, like, I think there's definitely going to be, like, some drawbacks to it and some advantages. Um, right. But also, not giving it any limitations would also be a mistake. Yeah, because I, I kind of think about, like, the balancing around some of these things. And I'm not an overly competitive gamer, right? I, I play games fun, you know, I get home from work and you know, I just want to jump on with friends and everything. Um... And if, if it's like something where people are just like, okay, you have to choose this, 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 and this, you know, in order for us to be able to beat the game or to like have a chance against the other guy who may actually just be trying. Um, I always kind of worry about like how all that kind of comes to play. And if this is like a, a class, a new class, right, where one person is just going to be really, really powerful sometimes or maybe all the time, I don't know, you know? So. Yeah, I think it will be a little corny, I'm not gonna lie, but not gonna lie, like, I'm glad they're gonna keep the silly tone, 
from what it sounds like because to me like right now what we've been getting has been very dark and gritty recently so it's good to know that they still have ideas to that are different you know and i hope that they keep doing this with the future original content like let's say the mall map is you know more arcade-ish you know in a way so i, I think it's gonna be cool so you know one thing i haven't really keeping up to date on and i guess would be kind of nice to kind of put this all into like one package right now would be like um obviously the story's kind of changed right so like previously the fiends were essentially manifestations of you know like the classmates fears and except for the father because the father was apparently like you know some guy who basically just learned a lot of crazy magic and basically became a god in this world um I guess my idea is like, you know, how are they going to explain these people showing up? Because I know this might sound a little weird, but like a zombie chicken, for example, like maybe, you know, I could see that being somebody's fear, honestly. Maybe like somebody worked in a meat packing plant. Maybe they grew up on a farm and they saw some crap and they were like, oh, my God, you know, what's this? But like, you know, at the same time, it's kind of funny now if you think about it, because you're going to have somebody who's like, okay, there's, like, a warlock over here, there's, like, a spider over here, there's, like, some big, buff, angry guy back there, and now we have, like, a zombie chicken over here? Like, what's what's going on, you know? Like, where are these things coming from? How does the universe yeah. come together here, you know? Well, I know from the original The Nightmare release, it was supposed to be like, oh, these are the things that these people are afraid of. And then when they moved over to After Dark, it was like, oh, well, these are manifestations from, like, the card game they're playing, which, you know, that makes that makes sense and, you know, however you want to tell the story. And now it's supposed to be more of, like, a comic book feel. So I feel like it's more becoming kind of like, uh, like Tales from the Crypt, where there's, like, different stories for each book. And, it's, you know, um, it's an easy way to be like, oh, well, here's, you know, a story about um, a zombie farm. and you know, zombie chickens. Um, here's, you know, stories about, you know, pollution and waste and Toxic Avenger. And here's a story about going to church. So here's <laughs> here's a priest, you know. Um, so I, I think if they're trying to go from just saying that it's like, oh, this is more of like a comic book feel, if the storyline is more about like a comic book like inspired realm, to where you can just kind of like bring things in like it's Tales from the Crypt, Haunt of Fear, that kind of thing. Um, from like those old uh, like 50s, 60s comics. Uh, I think that'd be a good way to kind of explain off um, why there's so many different things and why they're not always like make sense kind of thing. Um, yeah, and that's something that's kind of interesting too because you kind of run into the issue of coherency, right? Like, like redhead was saying before how would it make sense you know when, when you see all the stuff that uh would be added and you know you got some character be a little bit more serious tone like you know a uh, strangler or, or a giant or <clears throat> even the spider right and these are the traditional fears and whatnot and i mean even with the cemetery map seems like a pretty serious map i mean you know they're not joking around you don't see a um you know, like a chicken store some corner of the graveyard of course um I, you know, so I just kind of wonder if, um, you know, this is obviously speculating really far, and I probably shouldn't be doing it yet, but, like... I mean, isn't that what this I, is all about right now? I, I, yeah, I, I just don't know how it's all gonna kind of, like, make sense, you know, if it, or if it's all random, or, you know, oh, we just thought this would be cool, so we're gonna put it in the game, and, you know, there you go. So, yeah, I um, agree with you. Ahead, I feel man. with the amount of work they're putting in right now, I'm willing to give them the space to give me answers. Um, the way it was before, where it was very silent, and, um, you know, the, it kind of false, fostered this idea of just, you know, people just kind of gave up on the game, essentially. Yeah. Like, there were some of us who were still, like, just waiting for those updates, waiting for something to talk about to get excited for, and it just felt like it never happened. Um, yeah. but now with like the new dev team and the, and the publisher and all these announcements they're making to try to get people you know, excited about the game returning and being a thing again, um, 
you know, I'm I'm willing to give them the benefit and allow them the space to tell the story that they want to. Um, right. Now, if it was before, I don't know if I would. I would kind of be like, you know, this is weird. Why are you doing this? But with it being like a whole new team, whole new relaunch, it's basically a new game. I'm willing to see where it goes now. So real right. quick, we have a bunch of comments in the chat. Um, I'm not going to read off the names because I feel like that'll add like an extra five minutes to this. But Who real, are you? Real, real How'd you say this? <laughs> yeah, real quick. Uh, let's see here. Uh, last year is turning into Home Sweet Home. Punches bubs. Well, there was silly and funny moments for sure, but that was grounded in gameplay moments and not the aesthetic and theme of the game. It's like how yep. there was a lot of silly stuff which can happen in Friday the 13th, the game, but adding something overly silly, well, overly silly, such as something from Troma, would ruin the aesthetic and even take away from the original funny moments. Like the game uh. is now trying too hard to be funny. It's forced and not natural. Um, what worries me is that they are showing a lot of new stuff, announcing a lot of killers, and I'm not sure they will be able to deliver everything. The reality is that they have only shown us an incomplete map and an incomplete killer, and the game comes out in three months. I agree, three months is a short amount of time for a very small team. I don't see them keeping up with the three-month release time period. He said going to a church, I'm deceased as hell. Texas Chainsaw Massacre can't even do it. If Undaunted wants to make last year, take last year, excuse me, and turn it, turn it the theme and aesthetic into something more silly and lighthearted, almost the entire cast will need to be revised. I feel like, yeah, and Abigail's not even done, and they said they will release two maps, two fiends, and IDK. What else? It's worrying, to be honest. Delays are a likely possibility, it seems, which is fine as long as the content is polished and good in the end. The thing is, they confirmed even the day, so I don't know. Another delay might kill them. They have delayed a lot in the past. Early access in June, and I doubt it will release with all the playing content that has been shown slash talk about. So... I mean, obviously, you know, like, kind of going down some of these, too. Like, I feel like there has been a lot of, like, concept art for Fiends and things released. I mean, they showed the Jester, the Dryad, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but one thing I really do want to touch on real quick is, like, the, the cast. I feel like the cast wouldn't have to be revised at all. I feel like a lot of them are kind of, like, stereotypical, like, 90s horror stereotypes in a lot of ways. I mean, Nick is literally a nerd who just yells, The Nickinator 2000! And I have a pet rat! And, yeah, I make movie references. And then you got, like, Chad, who's like the brain dead jock of the team you know and he's like oh wow i can't believe that actually worked dude like oh my god and then amber's like the the prom queen and sam's like the why does nobody notice me i'm just a sad nerd and i wish the big buff jock would realize that i love him sort of thing but like i feel like overall they would actually fit that like aesthetic very well like i feel like if you stuck any of those characters in like a cheesy 90s horror film like they'd probably fit in just fine like i don't really see any issue there personally um but going on to like the release date i feel like since last year had already come out in like two separate installments that being nightmare and after dark i feel like a lot of the stuff they have to work with has already been done so i don't really feel like you know, they would have to do too much, especially from, like, the gameplay we saw of the live stream. It obviously looks like they've added some things, like the objectives and what have you, but I don't feel like they would have to do, like, a complete, you know, rebuild of everything. Like, I feel like most of the stuff's already there. They're just kind of, like, either changing or, like, adding things t on top of what they've already done. So I don't really see, like, the release date being too much of an issue. But then again, I'm not a guy with, like, huge gaming like development experience i just kind of know some things from talking with people so like if there's something here i'm missing like feel free to tell me but i i feel like you know although they've already released some concept art um hopefully that stuff's already in development because i would hate for them to run into the same issue that people did with like the whole pennywise and father thing which is like people are expecting this huge dlc to come out or, you know, this cool concept that was introduced, but then, like, it never gets followed up on, and people are just kind of like, well, you see what happened there? Like, you know, this was promised, it never happens, you know? So, I'm kind of curious to know your guys' thoughts on all that. Yeah, I, I think some of their decisions feel kind of spontaneous. Like, all this concept art getting revealed is great. But yeah, I do think maybe some time might be needed. We'll see. 
I, I don't know much about game development either, but right now, like, there's no audio for the Warlock in the live stream. And some of the stuff just looks not ready. Like, this is what I can think of. That front gate at the very beginning of the map uh, is just blue. It's just highlighted blue. Like, they need to change that because they have this cool effect of the door opening, but it's just highlighted blue because it's an objective, technically. So you can't even really see that effect of the door opening. And I know they want to have, like, a cinematic moment where the door opens and you see the map turn orange. I don't know. It's it's these smaller things that I think they need to polish up. And I hope they can do it in time for release. Because we don't even have the Dryad Killer or Abigail's voice lines, as far as we know. You know, these these sort of smaller things that you might not think about. Who knows? I, I hope they have enough time to get it all done. Yeah. And <clears throat> just looking back on the past when it comes to last year, you know, they've definitely got a record. Uh, or at various companies, of course. We're not talking about Undaunted here. Because um, <clears throat> this is their first foot in the door for uh, dealing with the last year project. I would say when it came down to Elastic Games, uh, we were oftentimes left in the dark uh, about certain things, and it took time uh, for content to come out. And um, what I'd say is uh, seriously, just take your time. Like, if you have to push it back, it's better to just have told us now at this point and just say, OK, well, you know, based on what you saw or based on, you know, the feedback that we have, we just it, it's, you know, it doesn't make sense for us to be able to have as much time as we need to do the work that we need to do to finish the product to get it ready for you guys. By this time, we just can't feasibly do that, you know, or we don't have the financial status or the, you know, the manpower to do it or I mean. It's just a variety of things, right? But, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> it, it's going to be interesting. Um, uh, I wish there was really more I could say about that. I guess one last thing I want to add, too, that I almost forgot about is, like, the whole, uh, the game has been in development for a while. Um, the last year Resurrection team actually told me, like, before the mod came out, like, two weeks before the mod came out, they were like, hey man, there's going to be big news coming out, by the way, we just can't tell you right now. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So like after the mod came out and like I played with it a little bit, they were just like, surprise, last year's coming back. So like apparently this has been in talks for like a while now. Like this isn't something like, you know, they just like re released it and they were like, okay, well, we're going <laughs> to see how it goes, brother. Like, you know, just... <laughs> Um, it does sound like they've put some thought into it and like they have been working on it behind the scenes even before like all this was announced. So hopefully yeah. like a lot of this stuff has already been like done, you know, and like mm -hmm. now it's just kind of right. like slowly introducing and going through it. But um, we'll see how it goes. So Yeah, I mean, you know, with what they've been doing so far, I'm really happy. Um you know, from what I saw in person, it looks pretty good. Um, there's obviously some things that need a little bit of, you know, like spit and polish kind of thing. Um, but from talking with Trade about the map that was being shut off, um, he did say that, you know, they're finishing up work on it. Um, but there's an entire section of the map they it's only going to be visible after launch. Um, so there's a section of that map that we haven't even seen yet. Um, as well as a couple of other things that are coming with launch. Um, <laughs> um, that they're still putting some polish on, but um, there are two questions that I went through during the interview that'll kind of cover the bases on basically this whole like release um, and information about the game. Um, so I'll kind of go over those now. Um, so the question was, uh, this is something that a lot of people wanted to know. For the people who have already bought the old version of the game, uh, they want to know if they're going to have to buy this version as well. And he said, yes, this is a new game. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Yes, people will have to buy, but I can tell you this. We're going into early access. June 25th is the early access launch. Our main launch out of early access will be when it comes to console because we are working with a partner on this. It's in the pipeline. So we are on the way there. Uh, when it releases on early access, it'll be 1099 USD. When we go to console, it'll be 1499 USD. 
Uh, the reason we're doing this, uh, there's just so much cost in terms of art. It's a whole new team, a new studio. Uh, I'm the only one from the old studio that came back, and we need to make sure we do the best possible work we can in order to treat this as a brand new title. It was the best decision. Uh, we moved everything over to Unreal 5, so we had to rewrite a lot of the code and redesign a lot of things. Uh, so there's just a whole lot of work that has to go into this for that. Then I asked, so essentially, this isn't going to be a port with added features. It's a complete rebuild. And Trade said, uh, I can see where people might feel that because we're bringing all of the old stuff back. But we are changing quite a few things to kind of add and enhance those elements. And just the fact that all the maps are coming to Unreal 5 with the new lumen lighting and the stuff we've added to it, we're going to make changes throughout the lifespan of those maps to dress them up for holidays and maybe do new school maps uh, and go to back to school kind of uh, packs down the road. Uh, in terms of new content that we want to sell, while a lot of it will be stuff we do sell, we also want to try and give stuff to the community for free. Uh, so we'll work and see on that. And I don't have anything hard concrete in terms of what specifically. But I can see us doing like a killer in the future or a class or similar that would be free just to be gifted to the community for everything. Levi. Levi. Levi, bro. Why didn't you tell us it was coming to console? You wanted to save that for You wanted to save it, brother! Brother, do you do you have any idea? Sorry, I'm yelling right now, but do you have any idea how long people have been waiting for that? Like, how many times I, know, I would stream I last year and people would just come into the chat and be like, when's it coming to console? Or like, you post anything on Reddit, people would be like, I really like this game, but I don't know when it's coming to console. Like, why did you not tell us this? <laughs> like, you, you just wanted to like, casually drop this like, oh yeah, like, it's gonna be $10.99 on release and you'll have to rebuy the game, but... It's It'll turn $15 when it gets released on console. Like, wait, what the f And they already have plans for it to top it all off. Oh my god. Oh, it's, it's not even plans for it. They're currently working on getting it released for console. Is that's the that, thing. That's what it's I'm saying. It's the pipeline. It's going god to damn. be It's console. happening, bro. Like, it, it's not even a thought right now. They're, they're actively working on getting it on console, which I think is great. And the fact that the game is going to be $10.99 for early access... And then fifteen dollars when it's fully released oh, and on console. Yeah, it's completely fine. It's a good price, especially with like everything that's going on <laughs> with the yeah. history of the game and just being. Um, that's something you know he mentions uh, in another section of the interview where he's like, "We're trying to keep everything at very reasonable prices. Uh, DLC is going to be very reasonably priced, where it's not going to be." excessively uh expensive things are going to be at a price where you know people will be like oh that's something easily i can get you know um especially being like oh you know there's gonna be stuff in the future that we want to release for free so that it's like giving back to the community to be like hey you know we understand here's some stuff that we think would be cool for you guys to have um there's also I have I have five pages of interview to go through. So. Um, but yep. yeah, so console. Uh, not sure what consoles, but I'm assuming it would be the the current gen, um, which you know PS5 last year is going to be pretty dope. Not gonna lie. Oh, um, man. Gonna have to buy it on console. Be a <laughs> greasy now, console player. I'm guessing crossplay will probably come with that. Yeah, then. I was gonna ask that. Yeah, I do yeah. not know. He did not mention that, which tells me either he doesn't want to let people know, um, or they're not able to let people know yet, um, because they're still currently working on it to try and get the systems working together. Because um, there is a lot that goes into crossplay between consoles. So, um, being a small studio, it might be something that's more difficult for them to do. But at the same right. time, I think if they can pull it off, uh, as long as they don't release on the Switch, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. Huh. R real quick, uh, let's let's go through the comments. Um, 
Let's see here. I can't lie, I say I made a lot of good memories on the game. Indeed. I feel like everybody can relate to that in some way. It's releasing in early access, so I don't see it being pushed back at all. True. I hope it's successful, but people won't care. It's in early access. They will go hard on negative reviews. It costs ten ninety nine, and it won't have progression. Games should launch with progression, in my opinion. I didn't know it will come out on console. Yep. Yep, that's why Undaunted needs more devs, or at least try to finish First Fiend and Matt before working on any licenses. Gross. The art design everyone hates is where a lot of money wins. LMAO. Trade is not the only old dev from Elastic working on the game. Sucks that the priest is coming along with it. Uh, isn't coming along with it. As if we haven't heard people planning console releases before and that fell out. I don't know why they are working on consoles when the game still needs a lot of work. I feel like... In my personal opinion, anyway, I feel like console release is, like, a big thing for asymmetrical games. Because one thing I've noticed is, like, even though some games might go down on PC, like, a lot of times they do very well in, like, the console markets for some reason. Like, if you look at Texas Chainsaw Massacre, for example, like, SteamDB has it around a thousand players, but apparently, if, like, with Xbox and, like, a few at PlayStation, etc., it actually sits around, like, 5,000 which is actually pretty damn good. And I feel like, you know, a lot of these games too, like like asymmetrical games in general, like that's a big untapped market for a lot of them. I feel like a lot of console gamers like the idea of the games that come out, but a lot of them haven't really been able to get there, and that's kind of like hurt a lot of them in the long run. But what's your guys' opinions on that? Um, um console, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Crossplay and cross progression would be awesome. That's all I can really say. Like, crossplay is just a net positive for every single game, except shooters, I guess, for some people. I don't know. More players is awesome. That's all you want. And I know a yeah. lot of people have already, like, played last year as well with, like, a gamepad before. So it's not yeah. like controller supports, like, a problem at all. And in fact, a lot of people I know say they like controller better for one reason or another. So. Oh yeah, I mean when I played last year initially when it came out on Discord, I've I played with controller since it came out and it's it's always been super comfortable to play this game with controller. Um I mean they've they did great work back then with its controller support and I I've got no doubts that the controller support will be just as good now. Um but also uh speaking of the priest father um, that is a possible cosmetic for the Warlock that they will be bringing back. But, um, yep. specifically he said without the Catholic imagery on him, just the base design is what would be coming back. Hey. Just without, like, the cross. What? How, so, do you, how do you do that? So, I'm, I'm guessing just, like, the priest robes and the look of him, but without, like, the cross. That's it. So basically right. just like a black robed like warlock with like the father's head stuck on his body. I guess that's one way to put it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um <clears throat> interesting thing there, yeah. Um all things considered though, I, I, I I'm absolutely completely advocating for a console release. Like you said, Redhead. Uh I, I think it comes down to um you know, having different people in different markets, right? And you know, you never know. There might be an absolute untapped potential that comes with console. Um, I, for one, I've seen many people uh, time and time again through many different YouTube channels. Some of my, some of the people who comment on my own videos are always like, uh, "Is so, you know, um, if this comes to console, absolutely play it." I can't. And this has happened from Elastic Games and other uh, various attempts for last year that they've always been like, "Yeah." Uh, we want to do a console release. We want, you know, we want to uh, get everybody to be able to experience content. Um, and this is, I actually have a pretty good feeling that this is, uh, this is probably going to happen this time around. I mean, the overall appearance and all of the content that we have thus far, I would have to say, lends to probably having a better chance at a effective success um and you know i think that comes with publishers that comes with um uh, complete reworks um to try to like uh you know deter any previous connections to um you know bad content or you know bad player base or bad anything like that not saying that any of this trans has transpired but i mean 
um you know it, it's it really is it's it's just an entire step in a new direction i think it's absolutely positive yeah i mean from just talking <laughs> with the devs at pax um they are very aware of the history of the game and yeah. kind of the attitude of a lot of people when it comes to the game and unfortunately there's a lot of people who have that negative mindset about the game where no matter what is announced it's going to be an issue um but from you know what he's saying when it comes to you know the console release he's he's not even saying oh we'd like to have this happen he's saying no we're actively working on this we're working with someone to get this done and it's going to happen which i mean i on the side, I tried to get a little bit more info on that, and he was just like, I can't give you a date, but we're hoping it'll be, you know, relatively soon after. So I'm hoping for 2025 we'd get the console in full release, but, you know, with development, who knows? Um, but, yeah. you know, they seemed optimistic about it, so I'm optimistic about it as well. Um, but I mean, you know, with the updates they've done, uh, especially with character work, um, they had to remesh like everything, rebuild the models for Unreal Five. Um, and from what he told me, uh, they're redoing the models for Unreal Five so that they can do better cosmetics uh, in a system where they can do more. Um, what's the word I'm trying to look for? More of um, intricate cosmetics, to where it's yeah. not as basic as the old ones were, um, where it was just kind of like uh, a free skin on the same, like, suits kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, the, uh, uh, like the Valentine's Day one, you can literally just swap that skin onto the base model, and it's the same thing. Um, now it seems like they're actually working to make these more, like, intricately designed models where they can add and subtract things to um, make super unique cosmetics which i'm excited for um he also said that they're working on bringing some of the old cosmetics from after dark uh that we could earn like the valentine's day stuff mm -hmm. uh, to the new game once they've um been able to kind of implement them on unreal 5 um and there's a possibility that some of them uh will be free updates for people who had after dark or right. had last year the nightmare, which I think is another great way that they're back to the community, even though you have to buy something. Here's some cosmetics that you had to earn during an event. We're going to give them to you because you owned the game at the time. You know, I think um, they're not looking at this like other companies where it's just a cash grab. Oh, well, we're a new company. We don't have any ties to the old one. Uh, buy our stuff. They're very acutely aware of history that happened and want to do good by the community and i think that's great you think uh you think we'll ever get our discord skins <laughs> i didn't ask about that <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. not happening that is not happening man i'm sorry i just don't believe it i mean to be fair they did release <laughs> a discord skin in yeah. after dark where it just had like the discord logo on the shirt yeah um <laughs> But, you know, I've given up on the whole Discord outfit thing. Um, unless they literally just make my character model Discord logo. Um, <laughs> you know, I would run around dressed as Discord the whole time. I don't care. Just put, like, googly eyes on it. I'm done. That's my character. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're working on bringing some of the old stuff back in. Um, he even mentioned, you know, bringing in some of the beta outfits. Um, like Sam's old outfit during the Discord oh, beta right. um, as a possible, um, you know, cosmetic or, you know, bringing the father in as a cosmetic minus, you know, like the Bible as a part of his cosmetic and just changing it to like a spell book kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, although there's definitely ideas for skins that he did mention that I thought were kind of cool. Like, a crab cosmetic for the spider uh where it's a giant crab um which a giant disgusting mutated crab would be kind of cool to you know pincer people 
Um, instead of, you know, just smacking them with the legs, you just pincer and grab them, which would be kind of cool. Uh, that might be too much, but, uh, you know, they, they have some ideas for cosmetics that I think is going to be pretty cool if they make them. And um, I think they've got the creative juices going to, you know, that's why we're getting the, you know, the, the dryad, and, um, like these uh, concept arts, because um, Trad... Uh, trade even said you know hey i've got like a bunch of ideas in the pipeline to where it's like hey i've got these character model ideas and i've got these new like class ideas and we're kind of like got a bunch of ideas that we want to go through to really see where they can go um which not all of them might be made but we want to share these ideas you know with the community which i mean i think it's a double-edged sword where, you know, you want to show them, hey, we're working on all this stuff. And at the same time, people will take it as, hey, we're working on all this stuff. Yeah. Um, as like a definite, this is going to happen, which in them starting off, I'm glad they showed us. But I feel like down the line, they might back up a little bit on showing so much stuff that it becomes like an overflow of content that people are expecting so what else did you get from that interview because you know console release you know that's that's just a minor <laughs> thing apparently console so release. you know just thought i'd bring that up casually like oh yeah we're getting console release by the way <laughs> yeah man i mean i mean we're even coming to like uh we're coming to the vibe we're going vr um i'm just kidding I didn't say that <laughs> oh um, man if we were gonna do VR, imagine? that'd be that'd be disgusting as the spot. I would get sick. Oh. Just you're just in the hole and you have to wait for somebody to walk above you and then you dig your way out and grab them and pull them back down. Uh VR in that game would be so disgusting. I, I would hit now. my fan, man. Or I break yeah. my light, dude. I'm too tall for that, man. I'd I'd cry <laughs> most of the time probably. Oh, no way um, I could do that. So let's <laughs> see. So there's some questions about the meta, which is great. Um, so we talked about trauma, uh, and I asked, is the dev team looking more towards indie horror like this or more broad horror? Um, and he said, everything. We're big horror fans. Myself, I'm among them. We want to do a little meta horror for everything. So we want to do trauma. We have another IP partner we're finishing up with that we're going to announce closer to launch. Anything from working in biomechanical horror to the different subgenres of horror. We want to do different themes with different DLCs roughly around that. That kind of homages films and styles you know. The Spider is kind of a homage to arachnophobia and creature features, that sort of thing. The Warlock represents some more classic films that are a lot older. You look at uh, the Italian film City of, uh, City of the Dead as a good example. This idea of cults and ghouls and zombies. You know, the kind of zombie flicks you might see back in the day, back in the 90s. Uh, that's the sort of what we are looking at. It's not one. It's not specifically one thing, but we're definitely not just slashers. It's slasher and other horror, hence the monsters. We're definitely going to have more slashers in the future. We're not done with like I have uh, a couple in the works in mind, and it's just we're gonna be done differently. Uh, then I asked, "Is there any sort of dream IP that you would like to get?" And he said, uh, Freddy Krueger, easily. Uh, I would love, but only Robert England's Freddy Krueger. I would love to immortalize Freddy Krueger because we're in the nightmare. It's his realm. It's his domain. I love that film. And I love the idea of having Robert England have voice lines as a killer and essentially say all these, like, funny, iconic witticisms inside. Well, I'm sure he'd probably be able to do voice lines more than anything else. And he said... Uh, but you know what? I mean, I've said it before. I'd love to just work with him as an original character. Uh, just him as an actor. Jamie Lee Curtis, all these famous horror actors. I'm a huge fan, and it would be amazing to bring them in and own a new character that maybe they design. Maybe they're a part of the mythos. Uh, that's what we're really trying to work with. I kind of like that. That reminds me of what Texas Chainsaw is doing with their new survivor, Virginia where it's kind of a unique character based on an actor's likeness. I hope they do stuff like that. That'd be awesome. 
Anything else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I've got five pages of interview. Man. Keep going, man. <laughs> um, yep. So I said, uh, with any of the updates to the game, is that going to shake up the pre-established meta from the old games? Yeah. Uh, I think okay. it will a little bit. You know, I mentioned how like medic and assault will have changes to the classes and how they operate. And that itself should shake up a lot of the meta, how they work. We are introducing new classes, the occultists, for the new game. It's going to be styled on 90s gothic aesthetic aesthetic for the magic. So that's going to have an interesting look. Uh, They're a support class that has a lot of healing mixed with a bit of damage and a little bit of buffing on players with a little bit of cursing. Uh, Like a little bit of debuffing on the enemy. So they're going to be an all-around support kind of method. Uh, then about the two that's updates, updates. I guess I kind of have a question altogether. Um, mm-hmm. how many classes are we supposed to have? So, from what we have right now, there's medic, assault, scout, um, technician, technician, and assault. No, I already said so. So it would be, <laughs> so it'd be the original So there's four, four of the base ones. Then yeah. Toxic oh. Avenger, they want to make a class. And the Occultist, they're also wanting to make a class. Six. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which I'm guessing the Occultist will be that goth girl we saw that they were designing. Um, yeah. It would make sense that that would be implemented with her. Um, so I'm... From the description, it seems like an all-around utility class, where it's more about, you know, I can do damage, but I can also heal, and I can damage um, the Fiend in other ways that it's not just, hey, I'm going to hit you with a pipe. I'm going to, you know, like lay a spell down that you walk into, and then it'll damage you, um, like just a damage over time kind of thing. Um, or it might, you know, make you slower or how they want to you know, implement it. It wasn't super specific, but I think the vagueness will get people talking about it, which is fine. Um, but I mean, I think having more classes will be better because then there's more variety in each match. Cause right now there's always pretty much a guarantee you have <laughs> one of each of the classes right now. So yeah. once they keep adding classes for more characters, you know, you might not have a technician on your team this this match, or you might yeah. um you might never have a medic because someone wants to be the occultist and they can do like some minor healing on people. But they also don't wanna just heal people. Um so I'm you know, I have I have thoughts, but I wanna see where it goes before I you know, I wanna see an actual like release of it to really see where they're taking it before i'm like oh this sounds stupid kind of thing right yeah Um, i agree what i really hope is that they have like classes that are different but can do the same thing so like you said occultist like more medics that aren't necessarily a medic or more assaults that aren't necessarily an assault so you can have unique uh you can have an assault and let's say another attacker, right? You know what I mean? Like these unique mm-hmm. like combinations. And you don't need a medic every game, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what I would really like. I could I could have possibly seen something like this be more of a subclass thing for act, you know, some of the main classes yeah. rather, right? So maybe uh you'll build items that are more in tune with tanking or maybe you know there's like a berserker where right you'll you'll have an item that just does straight damage but i don't know you trade something else and return for it probably health um or like medic is more of uh i mean medic used in a broad uh, you know a broad variety of terms so they could in a cultist right where they dabble in uh you know like a lovecraftian horror-esque magic and ends up creating curses and that's more of support. Um, and they utilize uh, healing th- reconstruction or something. But um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I've always kind of worked in games. Yeah. And uh, while it's obviously too early to just, you know, tell how it's even going to be, I think subclasses would be kind of 
it's dead. So, one thing I'm kind of happy about with the new classes, at least from what it sounds like with the occultists, um, is it sounds like they're going to be adding classes that kind of like take away some things from other classes and kind of like put it in their like playing field. And the reason I say that is because the biggest offender I felt of this originally was Scout. Like, Scout, to me, is, like, the ultimate all-in-one class. Like, you have a blind, you have damage via the shotgun, you have a smoke bomb for area control, uh, you have adrenaline for, like, rushing and buffing people, basically. I mean, you drop an adrenaline for your assault, they can essentially just wail on the fiend until their heart gives out, essentially. So, it sounds like the occult's kind of going to be taking some of that away from the scout. Like, they're kind of, you know, instead of the adrenaline, maybe it's like, oh, here's a spell that, like, you know, buffs you and debuffs the fiend, you know, stuff like that. So I would kind of like to see some of that with, like, more classes being introduced. Like, some things some of the classes had just didn't feel right to me. Like, for example, why does the medic have a gas mask? Like, I understand from, like, a team play perspective, like, having the scout throw a smoke bomb and then the medic being the one with the mask who runs in and, like, does the objective or, like, grabs the thing or whatever. It makes sense. But at the same time, it's kind of like, why? Why does the medic, out of all the classes, have the gas mask? And even then, if you grab the objective with the gas mask, I mean, yeah, you can drop it for your allies, but a lot of newbie players, you know, they grab it. They're going to be running around with the, the objective, so they can't actually heal. So they're not really being a medic right now. So... I just kind of feel like adding more classes and kind of like taking bits and pieces from the other classes that don't make sense and congealing them into these newer classes would kind of add some variety to the game and maybe, you know, add some difference in tactics and other things too. You mentioned spells, which is one thing that we're not going to have on the release of Early Access. They told us that we're not getting the Arcanum yet. But I do wonder how it's going to be different. I personally love, like, Ethereal Mastery. Like, that is my perk, just going super fast as a feed and messing around. I'm going to be really sad if I won't be able to use it. So I really hope that the Arcanum has a lot of cool and unique stuff because the spells were kind of just there, most of them. But I think that they could do a lot if they keep changing up the gameplay like this. My, you know what I mean? Yeah, my, my complaint with the Arcanum personally was that, like, I just felt like it was, it was too meta. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, like, what am I going to pick as Assault? Am I going to pick the spell that gives me damage bonuses after I beat up some cryptids? Or am I going to pick the spell that allows me to, like, I guess, you know, hold F on the objective and take a lot less damage? Like... Yeah. Not really a, you know, not really a no-brainer there. It's like, oh, like, obviously I want the damage or I want this, you know, like, and I felt like it was all the same on the Fiend side, too. Like, a lot of people were running, like, yeah. Last Stand and The Wall and Deep Wounds and, like, you know, why would you take some of the others? Like, Fight Fire with Fire, maybe there was some sort of use there on Spider, but overall it was like... Why do I want to pick a perk which essentially requires me to be on fire in order to get any benefit out of it? It just seems counterproductive. Yeah. So, like, I'm kind of happy that they're not releasing the Arcanum off the bat. I feel like that'll give them some time to kind of think it through as well and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, balance it accordingly. So, yeah. But uh, if they're listening, bring back Ethereal Mastery, please. That's all. <laughs> um, so, I did ask them about the Arcanum and balancing. Uh, and I said, will there be any measures taken to fight combat metas from becoming stagnant? Yeah. He said, we will always be watching the meta, and with new classes and Arcanum perks, we'll be able to introduce changes to shake things. Oh, thank uh, God. So it looks like as things settle down and people start getting into rut, they'll start changing up the Arcanum and change up things in perks. Um, but it's also... Do -do yeah, I don't want to see a website out there that's like, best last year perk builds for this class. <laughs> Choose this. You have to have this spell. You must be using this weapon on this map right here. The fuck? Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't want to do like that, that Call of Duty 
thing where it's just like, oh, you want the best no recoil gun? Here you go, right here. This is what yeah. you need. Only this. <laughs> no. It's like I want to, you know, like have a bunch of um, right. options where I can exactly. kind of mix and match. And I'm feeling like this, and might this might work for a specific, you know, build that whoever the fiend player is, or it might yeah. not work for them, and I just don't know. So you always have to try to, you know, see what works best for your play style instead of playing to a meta, you know? And that that's um, good. I, I like experimentation in these types of games, or, you know, like just mystery in general, you know? Yeah, because I think that's an issue with a lot of asims, especially when it comes to, like, everybody who plays Dead by Daylight knows. Once there's a meta, the meta is set, and... You know, the devs, they make a change, and then immediately a new meta gets set, where it's very stagnant on both sides. Um, and I'm hoping with the way they're planning on doing things, um, that it doesn't become stagnant, where it's always kind of like a toss-up of what you're going to face, and what you're doing isn't going to be, um, you know, the end-all be-all for how your playstyle goes for, like, the best outcome for you. You might use what you think is going to be, like, the meta for the game, and then it turns out, you know, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> so, yeah. um, that that constant change, I think, is what's going to keep the game fresh at this point. Like, like the illusion of choice. <laughs> <laughs> Red pill, blue pill, I don't know anymore. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so I did ask, in the last release of Last Year After Dark, there was a sort of progression system and microtransaction system. Will those be implemented in the new version of the game? Uh, we're going to have a store like the previous game, where we'll sell cosmetics. We're also going to have cosmetics you can earn for free, so not everything is a premium cost. And then, the only other cost we're going to have is with the DLCs in terms of additional content that we will come post-launch. For example, our new IP partner, Troma, and the Toxic Avenger, that'll pro that's probably going to have a price tag with it. But we're going to be very conscious about how much we're going to charge for that. Uh, I don't have a hard number yet, but we're going to keep it fair as much as we're aware of the various prices that are out there, and we want the game to be affordable. Um, and I said, would you say more likely it would be similar pricing to most DLC pricings? Uh, and he said, I would say similar to more fair, if we can. I can't say for sure, and I, if I give any examples, I worry people will take that the wrong way. But I can't see a character being more than $5 on the top end, if not less. And similar kind of idea, like a new killer, for example. That makes sense. Yeah, I can roll with that. Yeah, I mean, I know that's... Mm -hmm. that's a big issue when it comes to DLC pricings. I mean, you kind of saw what happened with Texas Chainsaw, <laughs> where some of the DLCs were, like, kind of outrageously priced, um, where it was, like, 10 bucks for a single character, and I'm like, uh, I don't know about that, fam. Um, and then, you know, you see stuff like on the Dead by Daylight end, it's, well, used to be, like, some of the DLCs are 5 bucks, and then they also kind of went on the high end where they were like, let's let's tack in a skin on this uh, and bump the price up five dollars. So it's you know, uh, pricing is kind of wild right now. But um, I'm glad that they're also acutely aware of you know pricings with DLCs right now are like a hot button issue when it comes to gaming, uh, and they want to be as fair to people as they can. Um, but I also kind of expect that when it comes to like a license it'll be more expensive than non-licensed items. Um, like, uh, if they choose to do, you know, like, uh, let's say an alien in the future, and it's like an original concept, um, that'll might be cheaper than, like, if they had just licensed, like, the Predator, you know? Um, so I appreciate that they're, you know, aware of there's going to be pricing differences between what they're Okay. Uh, so we've been going now for about an hour forty. Yeah, an hour forty. About to be an hour forty-two. 
Uh, let's catch let's catch up on chat here, and then we'll probably wrap it up here. But it looks like uh, let's see. Let me start from where we didn't catch up here. Uh, Okay, so it looks like they're probably doing it both ways, plus seeing how DVD went so successful by going console, it makes sense for them to trying to go on console. Controller was all fun till they changed Giant's Rush. I remember Call Me Viva raging over it. That makes sense. The Viva, Viva raging is like top tier. Yo, the Warlock has crosses on his shoulders. My exclusive Raj Valentine skin is ruined. No, a bit worried about the in-game store they have planned. Many games handle it pretty bad. What happened to Anchor and Chemist? You mean Archer and Chemist? Because I remember they had like an idea for an Archer class. I don't. I, was there an Anchor class or anything like that? Anybody know? Okay. I can't say I remember. I only yeah. remember like the potato gun and like the acid gun. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't remember I the concepts though, so, you know? Yeah. Goth girl, yeah. she has a name, mate. I would love a bard themed class who is better than having a flashlight. Uh thoughts on MMR. I am afraid of the sweaty tryhard players that will blow up the newbies as has happened in the past. That's a good point. Uh, well, good. That's mm -hmm. also a, a question that got asked. <laughs> Um, and I asked, uh, will there be ranked and casual play lobbies? And he said, for now, just quick play to keep it active, but we'll be introducing a ranking level uh, to help keep play players in their respective brackets, making it easier to find fair games on both sides. Okay, so they are going to okay. have like some form of separating the experienced gamer from like the casual, basically. Yeah. Or... That's good. Planned, okay. I'm fine with that. That is good, yeah. Any other big takeaways from the interview there, Levi? Um, so there was one last section that I want to get into, which is uh, now when it comes to newer characters, uh, when it's like the new licenses and new classes, is there versions of a characters you would like to see? Uh, and he said, well, I really want to start doing older characters. We will be, but I want to start showing off how those other members of the town are also affected by the story more than just the teenagers of the high school. Uh, what I would love to see is just a sort of tribute to characters that are uh, tributes to things like Archie Horror, uh, Goosebumps, and vampire, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that sort of thing. Uh, we're, and we're going to do a lot of our original content like that too. We have plans for a werewolf and a vampire. Uh, various slashers, like the Jester, the Crone, stuff like that. Uh, so we have a lot coming down in the pipeline. So it sounds like, you know, especially with what we've been talking about earlier, a lot of what they want to do with last year is kind of like 90s horror I could find in a blockbuster or Hollywood video type stuff. Like, you know, they're kind of bringing back some of these, like, ideas from, like, shows. And, you know, especially with Troma now, they kind of have, like, that whole aesthetic oh, yeah. going here. So... Sounds like that's I, kind of the route we're going. I honestly feel like a good like story element would just be like this is a '90s horror like video rental place like that just exploded into the real world. Like that's what it's starting to feel like. We're like it's like a oh, VHS kind of. Yeah, yeah, like the like VHS. That's that's honestly a kind of a good way to put it. If I'm being honest, um, you know, it's just all these different stories that are just happen to be on the shelf next to each other like one minute you're looking at an episode of goosebumps and the next minute it's buffy the vampire slayer or it's toxic avenger or it's you know like alien 3 or halloween 6 the return of michael myers you know uh turn ah mm -hmm. curse of michael myers sorry yeah i guess in this uh, case that movie had two names i guess in this um, case it's kind of like a comic book store almost yeah yeah Ooh, i don't like think the deal. gimmick they're going with but so, like, so far in this podcast, it sounds like it's coming to console. Uh, fiends are going to have some new abilities and things. Um, basically, the classes gonna... are also getting new abilities as well. Yeah, MMR is planned. There's going to be new classes entirely, like the Occultist and Toxic Avenger, etc. Troma License. Um, what else have we covered that stuck out to you guys right now? There's a secondary license that they haven't announced yet. So there's another um, license in the works that they haven't talked mm -hmm. about. Okay, so that's yeah. another big thing. I'm really happy about the pricing altogether on things. Ten ninety nine like, for early access and then fifteen on full yeah, release. Um, I think that's great. Yeah. Um, I also do have updates for the content creators. Want to hear that? Um, yeah. 
Because that was also very important <laughs> for some of us. Um, yes, yeah. So I, uh, I asked, uh, when it comes to the current batch of content creators for the game, is there anything that goes on with us that we need to know? Uh, well, I mean, we're going to be looking at our content creator program because we want to work closely with everybody and the people who want to work with us. For us, it's not about how big you are. It is about how dedicated you are. How much do you want to be a content creator for the game? With that in mind, we're going to be doing things like early access to be able to make content, uh, which uh, we can release build early builds for people. Uh, keys for the game, help with giveaways and contests, that sort of thing. So it's an ongoing process, and I need help. I'm working with some people who are going to help me flesh it out a bit more, but that is something we're looking forward to towards launch. Everyone who's currently an active content creator with the community, with what we are doing, will stay in the content community. As long as they're respectful, they're nice, and they're not being toxic or a troll intentionally, um, we we are just going to revisit. We will focus on the people who focus on us. Uh, that's the best way I can say it. So we're open to people joining. Uh, we just want people to want to play the game. Uh, I know, and I said, I know for a lot of us, it's been kind of a struggle to really do content for the game with how much has happened. And he said, there's ways of interacting with us. That's not about making videos, too. Uh, just being in the Discord, talking, chatting with us. Uh, it won't cost anything just to be present, to ask questions, answer questions for other people in the community. Uh, just being involved, that means a lot to us. Just anyone who's just involved on a regular basis, it doesn't have to be daily, but just on the regular, uh, shows us that you're here and you want to be involved. So it sounds like anybody who's already in the content creator program at the moment is basically safe as long as they're not like a toxic pos essentially is what i'm getting yeah okay um, and then he did mention uh he did mention that you know they are looking at people who haven't been active in like a year and haven't said anything in the discord have like they don't talk they're they don't make any content at all, don't talk about the game, don't talk in Discord. Uh, those are the people they're really looking at to just kind of remove from the program because they're just kind of there without, you know, doing anything. So right. um, they're happy when people in the content creator space are just even in the Discord talking to the people who are interested in the game and, you know, giving them feedback, and letting them know what's going on. Um, so it seems like it doesn't have to be you know, make a video every week. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, goodbye. It's very much, you know, we're happy when you make a video for us. We're happy when you stream the game. We're also happy if you just talk with us and talk with the community. Okay. I really like that. That That is so sweet of them to say stuff like that and to yeah. say that they notice us <laughs> in the Discord. I mean, as a smaller creator, it's pretty cool yeah, to have yeah, an opportunity yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Because it really says a lot when they're like, "Hey, you know, it doesn't matter if you're big what or you small. Do. We're not looking mm -hmm. at, we're not looking at the size of your community. We're just looking at how active you are in our community. Yeah, and that's what we care yeah. about. That's that's a good way to gauge that. Okay, so sounds like there's a lot of good stuff coming on. Good deal. Um, anyway, yeah, it is about one fifty though. This podcast usually podcasts are like an hour, but we're not gonna <laughs> not gonna make any comments about. It. So anyway, well, I mean, we had a lot of news. So. Yeah, we had a lot yeah, of news, yeah, a lot of stuff to go through, been... you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, who, good. Who, I mean, we only talked about a couple of things, like oh. consoles, and you know, you know, just just like, the big things news, everybody you know? cares <laughs> about. You consoles, know? whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> biggest news of all time: console is actually happening. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's like, eh, I'll just casually bring that up while I'm talking about the price of the game like what the f okay anyway so it was brought to you by a two a two hour drive and a 70 dollar pack stick <laughs> god damn <laughs> worth it though you with that one yeah i mean to get that news anybody have any suggestions on people to raid right now is there like anybody playing last um, year anybody doing anything 
There's no one on last year right now. That's fine. Um, I'll just I'll just call it Gucci here then. So anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Really do appreciate every single one of you being here and also just checking out the content. It's glad to see that the Forest Hills slash last year community is still going strong. Um, before we leave, though, uh, definitely feel free to hit that follow button if you haven't already. Really helps me out. Also keeps you up to date on all the local uh, and like latest last year and forest hills content um for the other people here why don't you guys go ahead and drop your socials real quick that way people know where to find you guys and then we'll call it good so i'll, I'll start Again. with you cruel go ahead for it uh yep you just find me on youtube uh it's gonna just be the cruel just look that up um that's pretty much where i hang out there uh, i'm occasionally on discord as well um uh just dm me play some games together do some cool stuff like that Right on. Yeah, uh, most people know me as Brandon, but I actually go by Wispfell, which I go by it on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, just about everything. So if you want to find me, just look for Wispfell. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can find me as Levi Breaks, um, YouTube, Twitch. Um, I will have the actual interview uploaded on YouTube tomorrow. So if anybody wants to actually see, you know, me. Standing in a busy convention hall with lots of noise in the background, talking to a dev, you know, feel free to stop by, check it out. And uh, I can't wait to see all of you guys once last year's released and, you know, we start uh, getting some matches on. Uh, also, I call Nick. Don't try and steal that from me. Number one, Nick Main. I already called it. It's too late. I called him during beta. You're not taking that from me, right? Who gave Nick a goatee? <laughs> Nobody. Mm, Nobody. Oh, really? You won't. You won't. You won't take my little. I got. Uh, I got whole photos of me. brother Justin being like, "Hey, bro, sorry we didn't get the goatee in this patch. We'll get it in next patch." And guess what <laughs> happened? We got oh, a goatee, man. Nick, fam. What are you gonna do, brother? What are you gonna do? <laughs> oh, you're not taking that from What's me. What's your claim? I, I called it back in beta. It's fine. What's your claim? The meme fame, brother. <laughs> Did you give Nick uh, a goatee? <laughs> Didn't think so. No, no. But during beta, I started the whole Nick is actually a killer meme. So oh. I don't want to, I don't want to start, I don't, I don't, screw you. Hey, that was Sam, thank you very much. <laughs> Sam was the killer this entire time. No, no, anyway. No. Sam is the simp. Yeah, whatever, kiddo. Anyway, have a good, have a good day, y'all. Nice seeing everybody. And we'll definitely be around in the future, so feel free to stop by whenever. Until then, peace. Peace. See ya.